Uh, several months ago, I got a question uh, via email about uh, center of pressure, and uh, the question referred to why when I uh, employ certain aspects of um, PST related to lower body, <clears throat> I um, talk about moving ball the foot to ball, ball the foot or, or, or feeling ball the foot to ball the foot uh, when the center of pressure kind of works in, uh, on an arc. So the first thing to explain about this is uh, center of pressure. First, pressure is essentially uh, uh, the um, relationship between force applied over uh, a surface area. So if you think of, um, <clears throat> let's think of like our right foot on the ground, um, standing flat-footed, the, the uh, foot is applying f uh, force perpendicular to the surface of the ground through the shoe uh, uh, throughout the entire area. The pressure will then be the force, the relationship between the force applied over the entire surface area. I mean, that's the easiest way to think of it. Um, the center of pressure, uh, although the, the calculations uh, somewhat complicated, can be kind of simply thought of the, uh, the, the singular point of force application given the, um, uh, the uh, force or, or, uh, for, or the force applied over the surface area. So it's kind of almost like a weighted average of the forces applied. So for example, if we split the, the forefoot and, and the rear foot um, into say two sections, a bulk of the, let's say we have equal amount of force applied here, equal amount of force applied here, our center of pressure is gonna be somewhere in the middle of that because it's looking at it, even if we look at the foot, ankle down to the foot, toes, right? Um, like this, even though we're looking at that foot, very little pressure is being applied in this area due to the arch. If we have equal distribution here and here, generally speaking, the center of pressure is going to be somewhere in the middle of that. So it's, it's, uh, uh, it's really kind of the focal point of the, uh, of the total pressure applied over that surface area. This is probably the easiest way to think about it. Um, so when you have two feet, so let's see, let's see if we can erase this here. Uh, if you have two feet, Standing, let's say, try, kind of draw this in a little bit of a, a golf type posture. This would be your left, so say you're striking the ball this direction. So now, if you have two feet, and let's just say you're standing evenly with force distributed uh, evenly, the, the center of pressure between the two is probably going to be, you know, that's just, you know, an estimation, but somewhere in the middle, especially if you have even distribution front to back and a lateral, medial to, to, to lateral, you're going to, um, uh, you're going to have the center of pressure essentially be doing to, even though obviously you're not standing there, that your center of pressure is going to be essentially against, I think the easiest way to kind of consider it would be kind of like a weighted average of the total amount of force applied over the total surface area to, uh, to some degree. It would be the easiest way to think about that. So uh, center of pressure is going to be um, uh, influenced by where the bulk of the pressure or where the bulk of the force is being applied. So for example, in the golf swing, as you take the club back and you're, you're going in, if we're looking down, we're going in clockwise rotations during our takeaway, end of our backswing, right before we transition into counterclockwise movements in the downswing, force will, well initially to begin, you're gonna create a counter torque, or you're gonna create a, a, a torque opposite the, the movement to get that movement. Once that movement is underway, you're actually going to be applying essentially braking forces the opposite direction with the lower body. So because you're moving this direction and you're applying an opposite force, essentially a brake force that ultimately then becomes an acceleration force once we get going into the downswing, the pressure or the force is going to be concentrated more towards the heel as you push that direction to start to resist this movement and start to break that, that clockwise rotation. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't have force applied in the front of the foot. That just means you're pushing this direction against or sort of resisting or breaking. So the center of pressure is going to, because more force will be applied this direction through the heel, you're going to have, um, you're going to have uh, the center of pressure be influenced. So as you move backwards this way, the rotations, the body segments, you'll start to reduce the, the amount of force applied through this foot, increase the amount of force applied through this foot, and you're going to be pushing this direction roughly. Um, 
so that the center of pressure, which would start out roughly between the two feet, will start to move this direction. It will move towards the rear foot. Again, remember, we're moving it that direction. It'll move towards the rear foot, and because you're applying your shear force or your horizontal forces strongly this direction to resist and break, change the direction into the downswing, it's going to be skewed a little bit this direction. So the, um, the center of pressure will start to move essentially on what you know, looks like an arc because it's being influenced by these. Now, as you start to overcome the backswing rotations, and now we start to move in the downswing rotations, this is going to shift into a little bit more horizontal type force this way because you're going to start pushing your center of mass this direction. So this will start to change into this, and the front foot will push very hard this direction. So you're going to get a resultant force like this here and a resultant force like this here. So again, you're going to start to come off the rear foot, so which means force is going to be applied more towards the front foot, and it's going to be applied in this direction, which will skew the center of mass, or I'm sorry, the center of pressure back this direction, again, towards the lead foot and towards the front of the foot because you're applying your shear force strongly through the forefoot working that direction, okay? And then eventually, as you swing through the impact zone and start to rotate this direction, you're going to, again, start to apply braking forces, which will move the center of pressure this way. So you have essentially this kind of arc of movement um, that uh, is going to sort of uh, be influenced by how you're pressing into the, to the ground. So the idea here is that the movement of the center of pressure is going to be influenced by not only the, uh, um, uh, the, the weight shifting, so to speak, but also by how the direction of applied force and how you're using that force. And that's why you have kind of an arcing look to the center of pressure. So that's, that's the first part of this to kind of define what's going on. The keys to understanding this are the direction of applied force and what's going on. Again, you're applying force this direction as a break, which is influencing the center of mass. You then are going to push this direction, so you're applying your, your force this way, ground reaction this way, and then and you're going to be pushing your weight forward now, more weight into the four, forefoot, so center pressure is going to move this way, but you're applying it strongly through the, this direction, okay, which is going to skew that center of pressure towards the front of the foot. That's why you get that arc. And then again, once you pass impact and come this way or start to decelerate, which happens immediately after impact, you're now going to be applying that, that, um, that braking force like we had here, which is going to skew the center of pressure uh, to more towards the, the midfoot or even to the heel. So you're going to have that arcing format. So that's the thing to understand. Again, reiterating, it's, the, it's not just uh, the, the shifting of weight, so to speak, but it's the application of force and how that force is being applied and why it's being applied and when it's being applied in the golf swing. So I guess part two of this is, is practical application um, and we do that through the progressive skills training or the PST stuff. Um, so the first thing to, to sort of think about here is the golf swing, especially the key components in terms of the dynamics, um, occur in very, very short time frames. The transition, the downswing itself is really less than half a second. Um, transition, which is absolutely crucial to the entire movement, takes place over just milliseconds of time, fractions of a second. Um, and so you don't have a lot of uh, you don't have a lot of time to be sloppy in the movement. So, so again, the first thing to understand in in in, in application is where does the how are we shaping that force and where does that force come from and how do we apply that force? Just because we see the center of pressure on an arc doesn't mean that we're 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 shifting posterior. We can keep our our center of mass essentially for the most part along the target line, rotate with a flat foot, but push this direction. If we're pushing hard this direction, the pressure, the downward force, the, the sort of the culmination of the force application will skew center of pressure towards the heel, but we're not rocking back to the heel. We're not turning and rocking back to the heel. There's a difference between turning and dropping posterior and turning and rotating around the bottom of my spine and maintaining a, um, a connection to the ground, a, a good balanced connection to the ground through the foot. Another reason why that's important is that as we change direction, we very quickly stop pushing hard this direction, and we start to push a combination of backward 
and along this target line. So the ground reaction is contributing to the rotation, but also getting us to the lead side. So we start pushing this direction. We push that direction through this part of our foot this, this way. If we've rocked off of our foot because we've shifted backwards in, in our movement, we now have to get the foot back flat before we can push along the surface this direction. That pushing is coming from this direction through the instep along the, the outside of the foot sort of from medial to lateral. So if our foot is off the ground, when we transition, we can't push. We have to get back to flat or, or a solid connection to the ground before we can actually push to create this action as well as this action. And if we are not connected to the ground, that takes place over a fraction of a second, we lose that opportunity. And that's where you get a lot of people who get in this posture, try to get back to a better balanced position, work the club over the top, or, or initiate the downswing really with rotation in upper body rather than a linear and rotational movement in the lower body. So keeping that back foot connected to the ground is imperative. Hence, when we do our initial kind of training, to train the body to the feels and the movements of keeping the, the, the rear foot can fully connected to the ground, even though you're skewing your center of pressure a little bit towards the heel, a little bit towards the rear of the foot by pressing hard this direction, you have to stay connected to the ground. So we teach people how to rotate their body while still maintaining a good connection to the ground. Okay? Now, that's imperative to the chain, initial change of direction. So working, learning how to rotate, you can, I can still rotate 45 degrees in my hips, I can rotate you know, 75, 80, 90 degrees in my shoulders depending on flexibility and still maintain a good connection to the ground. Okay? That's the one thing. Once we start pushing, I think what was referred to ball of foot, the ball of foot is in my, is in what we refer to in the center, of, uh, our, referred to in, in our a PST as press forward, where now what we're working on is once we've initiated, finishing that movement this direction. And that movement works from essentially the instep ball of the foot here to the ball of the foot there. Now this, as we get going, this is pushing this direction, this is pushing this direction, this creates, this is lined up with the hip to create a ton of speed here. This is helping create the rotation, but, but there's also some lateral component to it. And we want to work from ball to foot to ball to foot. You're not on your toe and you're not on your heel. You have to work essentially ball to foot to the ball to foot. I mean, that's just a feeling we try to give people moving linear down the line as we create the rotations. So you're pushing this foot into this foot, which creates the rotation. Okay? If I stiffen this leg and turn, what happens? I don't, I'm not moving ball of foot to ball of foot. I'm not pushing this direction while I rotate. What I'm doing is pushing my weight back to my heel. So what happens in those cases is rather than that center of pressure arcing towards the front of the foot and then gradually moving posterior uh, or towards the midfoot and, and lateral part or uh, uh, rear part of the foot, it immediately cuts off. So it starts to move that way and then it cuts off to the heel because I start to move that way and then I turn out and all my pressure goes to my heel. So it's a feeling of ball of foot to ball of the foot. So the first part of that action is the breaking resistance and initial change of direction. Rotate and then start that action. Okay? So you can rotate staying, you can rotate, push this direction, but keep that foot in balance and ready to then from here push hard and create the rotation through. So ball of foot to ball of foot is more of a feel um, that we're trying to get across to keep people in a balanced uh, state with, the, with the, the feet connected to the ground, completely pushing and pulling and creating an effective ground reaction pattern to facilitate both the linear component, getting into the left side, uh, both for ball striking uh, as well as for power generation, and also the rotational component, which again comes from this strong push here, which is why the center of pressure starts to skew that way, and then this strong push here, okay, even as we're pushing laterally. So the, the two are rotating with our, our rear foot connected to the ground as much as possible, okay? So as you rotate, yes, are you gonna get, are you gonna lose a little flexion in the knee? Yeah. Are you gonna get a little posterior? Yeah. But you don't wanna overdo that. You don't wanna straighten this leg and turn this direction. Now, my, my force is in my heel. That center of pressure curve has gone right to the heel. My forefoot isn't connected to the ground. I have to get back to a position somehow to get that foot better connected to the ground to now push and turn. 
to create that change in the shear force and I'm, I'm going to lose the timing. My lower body won't be as effective in contributing to the power process and it's going to impact sequencing, uh, postural stuff, uh, as well as club release and, and then obviously uh, club dynamics at impact. Is it impossible to create club head speed uh, that way? No. Is it impossible to get the club face squared up? No. But is it more difficult? Yes. Is it less efficient? Yes. Are you going to have inconsistency issues and ball flight issues? Yeah, you will. So the idea is, is the, it, the better in balance you are, uh, the more effective your ability to push and pull, create ground reaction force in an appropriate biomechanical pattern, which will improve efficiency, improve, improve your ground up speed development, um, and as a base will also improve your, your, your uh, torso dynamics and, and um, uh, upper body dynamics. Now, to do this, there's all kinds of ways to swing, regardless of your philosophy of, or your style of swing, and I've got data on the best players in the world that swing all different uh, types of ways. Um, regardless of that style, or your philosophy, your style of swing, stack and tilt, whatever, you're still, when you do it effectively, you will still be doing this stuff. When you don't do it effectively, regardless of the philosophy or style, you won't do this very effectively. And you'll see breakdowns in that coordination and in that patterning. So the idea of working ball the foot to ball the foot is more a concept or a feel to keep the foot in contact with the ground uh, to uh, uh, stay stable, to keep our center of pressure, that, that arc of the center of pressure um, um, controlled and within our platform, and, and also to then provide uh, ground reaction patterns that will ultimately uh, improve lower body speed output and sequence from the ground up in creating um, club head speed and, and movement, and ultimately not just speed, but squaring the club up at impact uh, through a, um, a more effective sequence of events, ground up, lower body facilitating at the pelvis, the torso, the upper torso, the arms to the club.